Everybody and happy new year. Happy new year. Did you have a good new year? Yes, they had a wonderful one. Did you eat some hog jail? Yes. Black eyed peas. Black eyed peas, cabbage. Okay, you got it, buddy. Yes, sir. I got, had to have it. <laughs> I, this year I fixed a jalapeno cornbread to go with ours. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, we like it. I tell you what was funny. Hunter, <laughs> he, he really wasn't into them black eyed peas. So, Nikki, my, my daughter in law, she'd put four or five on the plate. She said, now eat them. <laughs> he'd, he'd eat them. She said, "Just a few more." <laughs> but we got the hog jowl down him, and we got the black eyed peas, peas down him, and, and one bite of cabbage, <laughs> and then he was ready to go to the cookie jar. That's right. <laughs> but you're gonna take us to commercial, or you want me to? I take you. All right, take we'll us. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Remember the winner's circle. You got the gift shop, you got knives, you English saddles and accessories, English and cutback, Western and trooper saddles and accessories, complete line attack, bits, spurs, training aids, stable supplies, grooming medication, horse clothing, riding apparel, accessories, and footwear. While you're in town, go down to the winner's circle and tell them what a horse sent you. The Tennessee Walking Horse is a perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. All right. You know, Jerry, every every year I think about those we've lost. Yes. And it goes back years and years, but a lot of people that the young ones now, they don't remember the things that Joe Martin contributed to this industry yes. or what Billy Gray contributed or I mean they, they just don't they wasn't born, born then, yeah. and they were they were young, but I'm gonna tell you it it going back and looking at videos, especially on YouTube, it is uh, I don't know it just brings back a lot of memories. Oh, it brings back a lot of memories. Well, we are going to start off today with one of my old buddies that he and I went to a ball game at UT. And we never should have went. <laughs> but Joe Martin was a good friend of mine. I thank the world of him, but he he was really something. He was, but, uh, he was a good guy. Oh, hey, hey you, you couldn't be. And I'm going to tell you, when you wanted to know something about feed, you go to Joe Martin. Because, buddy, he could flat tell you. Matter of fact, we did a feeding video with him. And, uh, he went through how he fed and kept his horses in shape. 
but you couldn't you couldn't beat Joe Martin. No, you couldn't. And I tell you, he he liked to eat himself. Oh, every time I come home from Louisiana, he always want to know what, what kind of if I bring a gumbo bag or something like <laughs> something that. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I tell you something else. Every time Joe went to the horse show, he always had that big UT Orange trailer that yes. it didn't matter if he had 16 on there or one. one. Yeah. He was driving that truck. <laughs> There was Sky Miles. I tell you what, he he could uh, he had a horse one time called King Arthur. Sky Miles and Joe Talking about mean. Ooh. Now that horse was mean. Think about Joe, every time you seen him, he was the same way oh, all the Lord, time. Yeah. I mean, he just talked and had fun. And well, if you, if you look at him when he was on a horse, he looked like he was just melted and poured yeah. in that seat. He just sitting there, just going along with it. Just let it go. Shelbyville, Tennessee. He was something else. Simply red, and Joe Martin makes a good blue ribbon ride. And loved his dogs. Oh, Lord, yeah. And he would pick up a, a dog. He'd see a dog, a stray dog. Yeah. He'd bring it on home, take care of it. He'd go to the dog pound and get them. Yep. He was just, uh, everybody liked Joe Martin now. I mean, you, if you didn't like Joe Martin, you didn't like nothing. That's right. Now, that's a fact. One that oh, I yeah. still miss. Believe me, I still miss him. And that, that's just one. We've yeah. got a bunch more to go. And I think uh, next we're going to go to to a lady that uh, sponsored scholarships. She did everything under the sun. And uh, she finally got her world grand champion when I mayhem or the rose is out. Yes. Now, you're talking about a special lady. Yes, she was. Joanne Dow was special. She loved her horses. She loved the children. She loved this industry. And I was so happy when she won that. Now, I, 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 I said, and if anybody deserved it, it was Joanne yes. Dow that deserved it. And I'm gonna tell you, you can't do this and talk about these horses without talking about this gentleman, Mr. Billy Gray. I remember him from, from you name it, bumming around, he had it. But oh, I tell you, he was, he, was, he was a good one, I tell you. I remember a little bitty kid coming up here, couldn't wait to come from Louisiana up here to his boy and my dad stopped by there <laughs> all the time. Well, I can tell you right now, from that horse right there, Delight bumming around, in 73, he went on, and he is one of the few that had a horse that won the two, three, four, and age championship in just one year right after another. But now he, he was just a great trainer and a super, super good guy. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he won every world open world championship at the celebration. Yeah. In every division. He has. He and, has. Uh, Four-time world grand champion. But I'm going to tell you, I loved him on, well, that's when we, we put the name on him, the outlaw and the legend. Yeah. Because now, right there, the light of pride, great horse. His last few years of his life, me and him got to really sit down and talk. We used to sit a lot of time in the afternoon and sit and talk and he'd tell me his stories and how he got started and everything. It helped me out a lot. I mean, he showed me a lot about horses and just me and him out there. Just, I can remember. I really miss him. I can remember watching him and, and his accomplishments. But now, Billy Gray was a showman. Yeah. When he came in the ring, 
he'd go about halfway up and pull that shirt, that coattail out and fluff it up. He's fixing to go after him, buddy. That ring you that watch. He had a watch on his hand. Yep. Ring that watch. When he <laughs> ring that watch, you better watch him, man. He's ready to go. He, he getting it done. We was at the dinner table one day when it was, wasn't where it is now, but he got up and left. We was all eating, he got up and left. And this couple had come in and sat down at the table we was at. And we was talking about everybody and Billy's name come up and that gentleman <laughs> had been sitting there for a while, Billy, right next to Billy. He said, you know, said, I've always wanted to meet Billy Gray. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know if you know it or not, but you just ate lunch with him. <laughs> He's a good guy. I think about him almost every day. I'm at Sand Creek, and I, and I know when I walk in there. Well, you I can't help but think yeah. about him. He, uh, he was something else. He's gone, but not forgotten in my eyes. Hey, he just, uh, you can always get Billy to sit down and talk to you for a bit. Now, that's one thing you could do. All you had to do is just, hey, Billy, you got a minute? He'd take it. He was one of the first ones that we interviewed. Matter of fact, he helped me get Herbert Derrickson to do the first interview, him and Ronnie Spears. When I talked to him, they said, you want the one to get it? said, get Herbert Derrickson. He said, he's got kids and everybody in it. Yeah, he's, his word with his bond, if he told you he was gonna do something for you, he's gonna he was do gonna it. do it. He was gonna do it. Yes, he was. I always looked at him as when you had a celebration, if you didn't have Billy Gray there, he wouldn't didn't have much of a celebration. You're right. A showman, a real true showman. Outlaw Josie Wells, the outlaw in the legend. You can do it all. Yeah. Boy, this brings back some memories now, I'm telling you. When the final class one day draws me, it's ready to begin. The joy is brought to others, will secure his greatest win. Master the ring is in the show again tonight. It does bring back some memories right there. It does. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't help but think back and remember and think about it. To this day, when I hit, see that retirement of him retiring Ritz, yep. it still gives me chills every time I see it. It's like he's right there watching. Well, he was the man. Yeah. He was the man, no doubt about it. Him and Jimmy, boy, he used to love to go after Jimmy. Yeah. I still got his work spurs that he gave it to me. Is that right? Yeah. That was his last one. I tell you what, the older Tim get, the more he get to looking like him. We yep. went to hung out a couple weeks ago, and I mean, you can see you can see Billy wrote all in. Oh yeah, yeah. I tell you what, he 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 was something else now. Yeah. This next gentleman, it wouldn't be. I mean, we're showing trainers, but past the trainers, and we showed Joanne Dow, but there was one gentleman from Missouri that uh, he was. It, I thought old world of Harold Roberts. Uh -huh. He was one of these that just, he was right here with you, talking, loved horses, and he was just, Harold Roberts was something special. He loved these horses too. Oh Lord. He had me one time, he said, what are you thinking about my little bay horse? <laughs> but he liked them both now. Mm -hmm. And he, he was the one that saw what 
Jen to win could be. Yeah. He had a good eye for a horse. But Harold was always Harold no matter what. Very special person. And he's one of them, the men, you can see more of the women. But yeah. now he is one of the amateurs that he loved to show them flat Flesh shots up, yeah. as much as he did the performance. And that that is one thing I always liked about Harold because he, he saw the value in both horses. Yes. Yeah. Not uh -huh. just one, but both. Yeah, tip that hat. Oh, yeah. That's one thing he would always make sure he did. All about that Jose. And here he is. Now, he loved Sherry that Roberts one. Roberts is the owner and rider. Or the rider, Sherry Roberts, the owner. Excuse me, Sherry. Van Buren, Missouri. Harold Roberts and all about that Jose. They came to the celebration. Having never won a blue ribbon, they were winners the other morning over in Calzonic Arena. Winners again tonight. Congratulations, Harold Roberts. All about that Jose and carries him to the winner's circle here on Saturday night. Just like I say time after time, it ain't nothing like watching a good old video of a good horse and a good rider. Especially when you can reminisce, you can reminisce with, with what we're doing. That's, right. that, that's sure why I love to watch the old videos. Roberts made the trip from Missouri to Shelbyville, Tennessee to show us a celebration that has been several times in many years. But this year, when he goes home, He'll be going home with two celebration blue ribbons. No longer a novice there at the celebration. Another great ride tonight, this time with all... You'd have never Tennessee. known he was a novice. No, <laughs> no you never would. It's Harold Roberts, all about that Jose. Our novice gentleman, novice walking stallion winner. He was a good one. Yep. Certainly was. And he, he is another one that is missed because I miss our conversations. We'd yep. meet for breakfast and stuff when he was in town. We'd just have a good time. And he, he, he's just a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge. But you can't tra pay tribute to a gentleman if you don't look at the women's side of the thing. Oh, yeah. And this lady right here, I swear I believe she could ride a wild goat. Now, I really do. Diana Cruz. Oh, yeah was a show person, believe me. She would get it done. She rode saddlebreds, you name it, and she could ride. Yeah. Set a horse very well. Oh Lord, she was pure equitation. Yeah. And she had a good eye for a horse too. Yeah. She could tell mm -hmm. when there was something there. That's capital one. <laughs> Very plain spoken yes. lady. I mean, she she would tell you exactly what she was thinking, tell you how she felt. Just uh, she was a great friend. And she, believe me, I know she is missed oh, big yeah. time, big time missed. All right, we got one. We just well, we got one that we lost here recently. Yeah. And that's, uh, I mean, that that was a shocker for everybody, but I didn't want to do this unless I came back and recognized Eric Lackey because yeah. Eric was a big part of this industry. Everybody loved him. And he, uh, him and his lovely wife. Yep, that was a shocker, you know. Very healthy man, you know, 
Yeah, it, it's always a shock when you talk to somebody or say even high in passing. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, they're no longer here. But the old saying goes, when God gets ready for an angel, he's going to come get one yes, one way or the other. But now Eric was a, a showman. He really was and very competitive. And rode some real good horses. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah he rode some good ones. Anytime you saw him in the ring, you knew that he was on something that yep. could get it done. about your dreams and do whatever you can while you're living because you're here one day and gone the next. That's right. Definitely right. You know, I hate it, but there's some of the videos that, that we couldn't find because we, we had our site hijacked. Yeah. And a bunch of the videos got taken away. But Eric, you're missed, my friend. Now here's one, I've, I've never got to see Sonny's show that much, but now you talking about a lot of knowledge. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Sonny Shrivener, but he, he, he had the knowledge and he was big time in Missouri for a long time. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and showed across. But now he he taught his son, and uh, he, him and his wife met because of a pair of pants. I was told that they needed a pair of pants, and he took her to get a pair. Of them. <laughs> I believe that's right. But now Sonny Shrivener, he uh, he was something else. Yes, I can tell some stories now. He got some fantastic stories. You know, I, I would have loved it if we could have found the, the Benny Johnson video because that was that was a good one, but yeah. we never could. And him and him and Sonny were great buddies. Oh, yeah. Man. Great buddies. Sonny, you are missed at breakfast big time, bub. Yeah. We used to have some good conversations mm -hmm. at Midway Diner. Yep, you better do your job again before we go on. Well, we'll be right back after these messages. What's wrong with the Humane Society of the United States? Despite its name, the Humane Society of the U.S. is not affiliated with your local pet shelter. Charity Watch gives HSUS a D grade, finding around half of each donation is spent on overhead. Where does the money go? To pay some sketchy people. The previous CEO left under a cloud of sexual harassment. The current CEO, who makes over $400,000 a year, came from PETA, the same organization that kills thousands of cats and dogs a year. Then there's John Goodwin. He's a lobbyist who used to be a spokesperson for the Animal Liberation Front, a group that supports arson and terrorism, according to the FBI. The Humane Society of the United States might sound nice, but there's a lot you don't know. Visit HumaneWatch.org to learn more. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four times amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. More of What a Horse coming up. I have just been informed that they found Benny Johnson. 
I don't know how he found it. We we looked all night. We couldn't yeah. find it. But I was just told, and if we can play Benny, let's play Benny right now. I don't guess we can play him right now. We'll have to play him in a minute. Uh, let's go that's to our that, next one. Right there here. he is. Now, Benny, Benny and I did horse shows together. We did a little bit of everything together. But now, Benny was president of the Trainers Association. He showed. He helped put on shows. This was 10 years ago. You believe in that? Man. Boy, I looked old back then. <laughs> <laughs> I am old you now. You like Benjamin Button. You just get younger <laughs> as you get older. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Benny Johnson was very special. Oh, yeah, he now, was. He, he yeah. was. We could, but he liked his, his home, his, uh, uh, how they call them, home fries. He wants them potatoes half done. I never could understand that because I cannot eat a fried potato half done. But if they cooked them too long, he wouldn't eat them. He'd say, nope. That ain't. midway down, I had a lot of good ones coming to eat breakfast there in the morning. <laughs> oh, Lord, we used to have some, some great conversations, yeah. buddy. Mm -hmm. And this next gentleman, every now and then, we'd have one with him, too. Mr. Dick Myers. Yeah. Now, you're talking Dick about Myers. a horseman. Oh, yeah, he's a horseman. Uh, hey, Dick Myers was just, I mean, he... You could talk to him about a horse. He'd watch a horse. He'd say, you need to do this, you need to do that. He just... Dick was... Uh, Dick Myers is just... He was a horseman. What more oh, he can was, you say? Yeah, he, he was a horseman. He, uh, Fun guy to be around, help you any kind of way, fix on anything. Oh, yeah. He's a jack of all trades now. He loved the manure spreaders. He <laughs> fixed them... You can call him on the phone and just tell him what your manure spreader was doing. He'll tell you what to do to it to fix it. There ain't much he couldn't do. He was yeah. just, uh, he was just something, something else. Yeah. Something else. <laughs> Sit and talk to him forever. Oh yeah. Learned a lot just talking. You can now. He but was. Now he was he was something Uno was very special too, very special. And you know when when you do these, and you to memorize and and remember somebody, you you go back and there's a lot of people that they weren't trainers, they were owners, but they worked diligently in the background yes. to ensure that you had shows and different programs. This lady right here was one such lady. Kathy Sice, bar none. Kathy was, you call her and say, Kathy, we need to do a show to raise money for kids. Uh -huh. When you want to start. I mean, she's ready to oh, go. Yeah. And she she was very knowledgeable. We talk, met with a, a senator and a representative from Nashville about starting equine education in schools. She. Uh, when we started equine education, we had, uh, we even had a put on a show in Lynchburg that she helped to raise funds to promote the celebration uh, and for equine education. And when I finally got the equine education going, Kathy jumped in with both feet, but she was ready yeah. to get it going. And we was furthering it. We even got Walmart made a major contribution to help us have another equine education. So Kathy was, she, she lived for the Walking Horse yeah. Industry, mm -hmm. as she really did. Like the horses. Oh, hey, she was special, very special, very special lady right there. Yeah. And you know, when you uh, when you go and look at at people who rode horses, trained horses, and showed them and everything, uh, I always look at a way a person sets the saddle. Yes, sir. By and just saying that, I know exactly <laughs> who you're talking about. <laughs> and there ain't nobody 
but nobody set a saddle like Ronald Young. Yes, yeah, so you exactly I right. I mean, Ronald, he just sat back there just like he was in a rocking chair and, and let it go. Oh, yeah. You know who that is on the saddle with him? <laughs> That's John <Yeah>. Boy. <laughs> but now he he entered the uh, Extreme Cowboy competition oh, yeah. over Celebration. He borrowed that horse up. Uh-huh. Something special right there. Oh, yeah. You know which one that is, don't you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look here now. Well, there's Virginia Stewart. Now, he sit up straight just like a person who's supposed to sit on That's a horse it. up there now. He's but it's just the way he sit back yeah. in that saddle and it and never budged. I mean, yeah. he his hands and everything, he right where he had them, head straight up. He can flat get it done. Ronald Young. He was a good guy. He was a horseman and he was yep. a cowboy too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he could get it done. Now there was, there was a lot of things said about this next lady. But one thing I do know for sure, they told her she was going to wear a hat one time. They said, no, you ain't. You're not going to wear a hat because when you go in the ring and they see that head of hair, they know who, who you are. are. <laughs> and here she is, Miss George Ann Pratt. Yeah. My first dollar. I tell you what, George Ann was good to a lot of people. Yeah. She is a, we've had some, some of the best conversations that you could ever want. And she was always very complimentary of other riders. Mm-hmm. Her and her little group of friends, women friends be right there together at the horse show. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well I know she was very complimentary to Dahlia Smith when Dahlia was getting ready to come into the adult yeah. She said, Lord, your next next year we've got to contend with Dahlia Smith yeah. and said, that girl knows how to ride a horse. Yeah. <laughs> good horse. No, no, she didn't have nothing but good horses. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she from Ozone's cut above all. To, you you name it, my first dollar, she had them. She had some good ones. Get it done, yeah. boy. Mm -hmm. Very special lady, very, very special. We've got one more lady that we're going to do and then we'll take a commercial. But I want to show this one because to this industry, she will always be an icon 
and we'll always have a part of her with us. And that's because of the portraits that she did throughout her career. But Billy Nipper was by far one of the finest ladies oh, yeah. that this industry has ever seen. She is just, uh, she just, and, and more fun to, enjoyable to talk to. But now she, her and her brush, she, I've got an oil painting of a boxer that she did for me that hangs over my recliner. She's, she and, can uh, paint anything. Hey, she's very special lady. Oh yeah. Very mm -hmm. special. All right, you can do it again. We'll be right back after these messages. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communication. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. I'm going to tell a little story about this next person. He's the only person I've ever seen that would buy the same horse twice. <laughs> God knows I loved him. Yep. <laughs> but, and if you asked him, what was it he said? John, I sold you that horse and you didn't like him. Well, I like him that, today. Yeah. <laughs> Don Collins was, well, if, to know Don, to be around Don, then you'd understand what we're talking about because yeah. Don truly was one of a kind. He was. Now, he's going to speak his mind, going to tell you what he thinks, it, one it, way or the other, but, I mean, he's a, he's a good guy. Hey, we used to have breakfast together all the time. It, it, you'd make him mad, but it, next morning he'd be in there and he'd do something trying to make you mad. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he just, but, I mean, he's always, he's been good to me. Hey, he, he's a special, his wife. special person. Yeah. All right, here's someone that I used to, this man and I would get in the biggest argument. And I mean, just you'd think we was fixing to fight. And then to say, about lunchtime, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we go eat. Sonny Holt, one of a kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you said Sonny, you said a mouthful. It's, it's said about Sonny that there would not be a Mexican restaurant in Middle Tennessee if it wasn't for Sonny Holt. That's right. He was, he was special. Mm. Oh, the times we used to have, buddy, I can tell you. He, uh, something else. Him and Wayne Putman, big, big buddies. Yes. Big buddies. But Sonny is one of these that, uh, in all honesty, you couldn't help but like him. Oh, yeah, I mean, I you couldn't. You. He was just, he was Sonny. He trained horses, sailboats, yeah. he could do it all. He was a salesman now. Very special person. Yeah. He was another midway downer. Yep. Person. 
eating breakfast out there many a day. Yep. Look at that big rocky R. special. He was. And he was, he was sunny, period. Was sunny dead. hope. All right, the next one, Jerry, he, he wasn't what you call a big person when it came to showing horses, but when it come to trail ride, there wasn't nobody, nobody could put on a better trail ride than Raymond Penenthal. Mm -hmm. He, he made me sheriff down there one year. Okay. Yes, sir. But he would have some of the biggest trail rides, and he'd have everybody and their uncle working. He would arrange for CJ, a four-wheeler for CJ, to where he could always stay in front of us. And now this trail ride was the one that was in War Trace. War right? Trace. Okay. And he'd have a big cookout with a band, and, and and he'd show up at a horse show with a visor with all kinds of hair sticking out of it. <laughs> but Raymond was, yeah. uh, he was. Uh, Matter of fact, we thought at one time he had passed away earlier. And uh, I had to call around to find out. And I ended up talking to him. I said, well, it wasn't you. <laughs> but now he, uh, he'd take you through places you would not believe. One time we was down there and I was videoing. I looked up and there was a llama in the line. We was going around the pond yeah. and there was a llama right in between the horses, <laughs> following him around. <laughs> But that, I want you to look at the size oh, of the yeah. trail right. That's something else that misses a good trail ride like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Raymond was very special. Yeah. Very special. He did, he did a lot for this industry that people really didn't realize that he was doing. But as far as promoting the industry, uh -huh. Raymond was a big promoter, big promoter. And if I'm not mistaken, now we're going to show some horses, I believe we are, that, uh, what I say? What do you think about that one? Oh, yeah. Main power. You know, everybody, used to, everybody used to talk about this horse being mean. But I want you to know, Debbie Eichler was going to stall that horse laying down, uh -huh. take watermelon in there. She'd lay down right, lean up against him, sit there and eat watermelon, feed watermelon to him. He just, a, he, was a, he was a good one. And he had some good offspring. Oh, yeah. I mean, some real good offspring. There's Debbie riding him there. He's a good one, a real good one. And we've got, but we've got more. I don't know which ones we, we've got, but I know we've got a bunch of real good ones. And CJ, just go ahead and play them. We'll catch up with you. The dash between the dates tells the story of a great Tennessee walking horse. Ozone's cut above all entered the show ring in 2006, showing as a two-year-old stud. And after winning several shows, he, he was purchased horse. by yes. George Ann Pratt. He was outstanding. He would continue his winning ways, carrying her to the winner's circle many times 
as well as be honest, I always now. thought he was the three-year-old world grand champion it myself. Was in 2010, he would show the world his greatness by winning the 15-2 and under world championship, and then coming back to be crowned the 2010 15-2 and under world grand champion with John Allen Callaway in the saddle. He would continue to carry both George Ann and John Allen to many more wins before his untimely death. Our salute to one of the great Tennessee walking horses. Fifteen. It wasn't that wasn't a lot of years, no. but he he had some good ones while he did. Go ahead with our next one. How many world championships yeah. has this one done? Oh yeah, he won a bunch. And you know, that was a, a, a sad ending to a great pony. Oh yeah. It really was, to have an accident in a round pen. But those two right there loved him. Yep. I can tell you that. A little red wagon. I should have looked that up on how many he had won. Because he now he, yeah. he has won a bunch. Mm -hmm. But he was just a great pony. Great pony. Yep. And I know we've got one in here. I'm, I've, I don't have the list of the horses. I know which ones they are, but I don't know which rotation they're going to come in. But we've got one that uh, I'll never forget the night that they won the world champion world grand championship that uh the way that they left the ring yeah and, and as soon as, i'm not sure which one it's going to be john fk's pusher oh that's a yes that was a good horse right there hey i'm telling you that horse right there was a piece of work oh yes and robin just Robin is a petite lady, yeah. but now she is on that big horse, and I'm I'm telling you, I just uh, that horse was a power horse to ride too. I had a couple times riding ride him before. Nobody she could ride him. I used to work at Dick's. I tell you what, Dick people had his number. Yeah, he was training for Robin McDonald. Well, he was. He just he was just flat out children. great. Robin McDonald. Some horses you try to find Thousand something. Devils, yeah. Not that one. John F. K.'s pusher. Homer, yeah. that was his name, Homer. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if we got any more or not. I can't remember. But I do know we're having, yes we do. That's a prime example of the way the horses change color. Yeah. Boy, Roy Wester, he he hated losing this one. Oh yeah. I just tell you, 
up there at Heaven, and walking towards Heaven, they have a lot of good shows. They have <laughs> they horses sure and trainers and, they, and riders. They got the riders and, and everything and, and else. Everything else. Mm -hmm. I imagine up there they all show against each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'd be more fun that way. That's, well, we I know we've got one more, and this is one that uh, we went out after they took it out of the pasture. He was in the pasture because they knocked shoes off of it each year. We videoed them putting the pads and package and everything back on him. And then he went in and went straight back to work. And that's command and control. He had his own way of doing yeah. everything. What Cheryl and Winky showed him every now and then, but now yes. that was Cheryl's horse, 100 percent. Horses that we've lost. I mean, we've lost some great yeah, horses yeah. too. Mm -hmm. I mean, some good ones. Yeah. That was a video we had him in the past. Yeah. Now, we've got a good one. Oops. Mm-hmm, he was a good horse, a real good horse. Oops, <laughs> used to like it, but they say, oops is out here, <laughs> but I've watched out on parole. I've watched him do a lot. Now, they, we carried him over to uh, uh, Miller Coliseum. Yeah. Had him over there and let a bunch of young ladies ride him. One lady said it was the most magnificent thing she'd ever done. She'd never done nothing like it. That was a nice horse, good horse. Oh, yeah, he was. That right there was in uh, Tunica. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think that's the last time he ever showed. That was over at the Ag Center when we were doing demonstrations over there for the breeders. That's at Rising Star when they were letting different people ride. Uh -huh. And he, I don't know how many he rode out there, but now he let a bunch of kids ride him. Yeah. They were having a, that was a pony club that come to town. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. And that right there, you know who that is? For his on that horse. Appearance, As a 10 year old Benjamin Bowen. Grand champion <laughs> out on parole. With his trainer and friend, Steve Dunn, in the irons. Give him a great west side round of applause as he comes in. That was a good, a real good horse. Yeah, oh, yeah. That day that Benjamin rode him, they said, who wants to ride him? And, and Benjamin ran to the front of the line. <laughs> I tell you, just sitting back looking at these horses right here, they, um, it still make you excited just by watching them. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Because yeah. I'm going to tell you now, they were, they were some great horses. Oh, yeah, some good horses. I mean, outstanding horses, and they did a, I mean, they did a lot. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to have one more, maybe, uh, if, it, if we got it to load, because it's a little bit older video. But, uh, and we did. You see how come it's so old? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's when you were young. That's right. <laughs> But you don't look like no kid, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Watch for Jerry Williams as this horse had a kid rock in the open competition. At, at that time, Billy Gray was he was helping me ride and work this horse. Yeah, and stuff like that. And Russ Thompson died. Died, him. yeah. <laughs> That's it. I, tell you. I remember. <laughs> I remember I was there. We videoed that. Mm -hmm. I said, I wonder if they're gonna tie Jerry. <laughs> he don't look like no kid rock, but they did. They let you win. <laughs> well, I, I, that about concludes our show for this week. Are you done? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. And I tell you, I, I am looking forward to because we're still going to be doing some educational videos. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to be showing some two-year-olds for this year because you've got some. You've got three-year-old, two-year-old. Two yes. And. Uh, you're out there where we can get some good video. Oh, we got some real good late coming. Um, they three years now, but I'm gonna tell you, they have really turned around. But mm -hmm. well, they're looking good. Yeah. I've watched several of them, and, and I think you you got you're on a winning track yeah. there. I'll tell you another thing. Some of the uh, trail horses. I've been watching these uh, auctions, and I'm gonna tell everybody. These auctions for trail horses, even over at 40, uh, Highway 43 auction, yeah. I think their highest seller was a trail horse, and it was sixteen thousand something mm -hmm. dollars. I mean, that's that's good money oh, yeah, for a trail that, horse. That is good money. But it it speaks a lot for our industry, yeah. and that's why I think people need to start thinking about yeah. that because I know uh, we we just put one out on on the eBay. And got a good penny but, for yeah, him. That's right. Uh, that's just something for everybody to consider: mm -hmm. is what the value of our horse is. Because we've got a horse that I don't know. I've never asked one of them to do something they couldn't do. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we do it, pull a plow. I mean, that's the way we got started. Mm -hmm. So we might as well go back to it and let them go out in the pastures, do the things, teach them to do stuff. Shoot off their back. Go to the woods. Oh, yeah. People can have fun. Well, that's what it's all about, having yeah, fun. Having I know fun. you've got some jumps out there now. You've yeah. got people wanting to learn to jump. To jump and stuff like that. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I don't want to jump. <laughs> but i tell you what. Next week, we'll come back with something different. It may be educational. It may be just some old videos, which I enjoyed this. So we may just go dig up some old classes. Yeah and show them. But we want everybody to know that what a horse is here to stay. Yes. Heidi, Jerry, until next week, I'll see you tomorrow. Matter of fact, I'll see you after a while. That'll work. <laughs> Y'all have a good weekend. Happy New Year to everybody. And we'll see you Happy again next week. <laughs>